Ah, welcome to IDEF, welcome to FNSS's stand at IDEF 2023. Um, I'm pleased you mentioned technology. Uh, my name's Douglas Jackson, I'm the Assistant General Manager at FNSS. I look after our operations, uh, so mostly I'm back at the factory looking after production, engineering, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, and on the subject of engineering, behind me you can see our hybrid tracked uh, vehicle. We've been developing this technology for the past two or three years and we're pleased to display it at IDEF for the first time. This morning we had a, uh, a presentation by our general manager, Niall Kurt, where he was uh, talking about the technology to the media. So it's fantastic that I get to talk to you guys and also talk a little bit about this. Um, this is hybrid technology developed for 15 to 20 tonne class vehicles. Hybrid technology for us is the combination of traditional propulsion with battery power. So in the vehicle you will see that we have two huge banks of 700-800 volt batteries that power the vehicle. We have a conventional engine uh, that provides the generation power for the, uh, the batteries. We use the battery power to power two motors in the front of the vehicle and as you can see uh, to help everybody understand we put a Perspex uh, cover so everybody can see these two motors. These two electrical motors transmit the power down to the tracks and drive the vehicle. So the solution we have is unique for us. Hybrid technology in itself isn't unique to FNSS of course. I think what we bring uh, to the market with this vehicle, this is our production tracked weapon carrier vehicle that is in service with the Turkish Land Forces and we've taken an in-service vehicle and inserted hybrid technology. So we bring our armoured vehicle um, design and manufacturing capability, we can package, this isn't just a technology demonstrator, this is an iteration into what potentially could be a product in the future. So yes, we definitely envisage um, uh, continuing our internal R&D investment so we can take this technology beyond 20 tonnes. The next step for us is to target the 30 to 40 tonne class uh, in the future. So at the moment we envisage um, this vehicle going into trials later this year and we will learn a lot as we trial this vehicle and understand the technology. The next iteration for us will be upper weight class and yes, who knows, we could end up with main battle tanks by the end of uh, our R&D process. Uh, yes, there is many uh, technical advantages. One of the things we've done in this project is we've, we've mapped the characteristics of a tracked vehicle with a conventional engine so we understand the behaviours of the vehicle. As an armoured vehicle manufacturer, um, that's one of our core competencies. So we can then understand how to use the hybrid technology so we replicate and improve on what a conventional drive vehicle will do. Obviously, having two banks uh, of huge battery capacity in the vehicle uh, improves uh, the opportunity to integrate more advanced systems, more energy-hungry systems on the vehicle, which when you look around an exhibition such as IDEF, you will see suppliers marketing their wares in this uh, area over and over again. And um, so it gets silent watch capability that is far beyond what you can get with a conventional drive vehicle unless you take that valuable space with both conventional drive and extra batteries. So there, there's lots of advantages and having a technology demonstrator like you see behind me gives us the chance to um, discuss these opportunities with the user and get their input. Uh, and one of the things FNSS I think does very well is maintain its relationships with the users and get that feedback from the field and continuously evolve its products. No, for this technology demonstrator, the, uh, the hybrid drive vehicle, we use a production vehicle chassis. So this is the weapon carrier uh, 17, 18 tonne class tracked vehicle chassis that is currently in production with a conventional drive system in. So our intention is to develop a technology that is vehicle agnostic so we've inserted it in this production vehicle. There's some minor changes in terms of layout, but the actual vehicle itself maintains its original characteristics, which is important because we've qualified this vehicle and it's in service. But uh, keeping the technology vehicle agnostic allows us to offer it to customers both for new vehicle production and potentially modernization programs where they want to upgrade their old vehicles and extend the service life. Um, I think this product will be marketable within uh, a two year time frame. It may come a little bit earlier, we'll see how the testing goes, um, but in terms of being ready to go into production, in terms of being ready to insert into our uh, serial production, I think that's a reasonable time frame.
So the 8x8 vehicle that you see behind me is the latest iteration of our PASS family of wheeled vehicles. This is the uh, PASS special purpose vehicle. This is one of the first vehicles that's been developed for Turkish land forces. We have both 8x8 and 6x6 configurations in that contract and we're just starting to roll off the first vehicles and this will be the first of about 100 vehicles we will manufacture under that contract. So this is the APC variant that you see behind us. So this comes with a number of uh, crew seats in the back. We can take a look around the back. Uh, you will see that it's armed with a 25mm uh, remote turret. Uh, the turret that you see on the vehicle is FNSS's own design uh, and is uh, product agnostic, so we can mount that turret on uh, all the different products that you see on the stand today. Yes, so there's some unique features to this vehicle that you won't see on our other past family of vehicles. The door that you observed is, is correct. This is a, a specific customer requirement for uh, safety features. This is an evacuation door, uh, so the crew can evacuate in case of emergency. The other unique feature compared to the other pass vehicles that you will see on this pass vehicle, you see we have the ballistic windshield uh, on this vehicle. On our traditional pass vehicles we use the periscopes, but in keeping with our pass concept, we have a mid-engine and we have the commander and driver sat at the front of the vehicle with increased uh, situational awareness for both occupants. So this design is uh, common to our PASS family of vehicles, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the commander driver at the front gives increased situational awareness uh, to those occupants. You will see as you come back into the vehicle, we have uh, space for eight dismounts in this variant, plus the gunner sits in the back of the vehicle. Because the weapon station in this uh, variant is remote, you will see that the basket doesn't intrude into the crew space and maximizes the crew space. This is a very high mobility uh, vehicle. The 8x8 system gives uh, improved trench crossing capabilities um, versus the 6x6 configurations. It has the usual uh, 60 degree uh, hill climbing capability, 30 degree uh, side slope um, capability. Um, I think we get up to about 100, uh, 100 plus kilometers an hour in terms of uh, top speed. Uh, it has hydro pneumatic uh, suspension which improves the comfort for the crew. Just this um, contract doesn't have amphibious capability. As past family of vehicles does have amphibious capability. It depends on what the customer wants. Yes, this vehicle, so um, the, 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 the PASS SPV, the vehicle that we see behind us, uh, we actually developed ourselves, we developed a 6x6 six six under our own R&D uh, funding and we've been testing that vehicle for well over two years now. So uh, its characteristics are advanced, we understand the vehicle and that's why we can uh, put it into production with confidence about the characteristics. Thank you. There's no windows, there doesn't tend to be windows in the back of this kind of vehicle. That's mainly due to um, ballistic protection requirements, IED protection requirements. Um, situational awareness can be provided for the crew in the back via uh, uh, cameras, external sensors put into the vehicle and shown on screens. Um, that's quite important in this kind of vehicle because you have the commander in the front and then you have the gunner in the back. So there, there's a certain level of communication systems that we put in uh, the vehicle to give the crew that situational awareness they need. Uh, in terms of production, we're ramping up production of this vehicle now. Uh, the vehicle itself will go into qualification with the Turkish customer in the very near future um, and by the time uh, we get towards the end of the year we'll be, we'll be in full production in Ankara at FNSS.